Hey guys, Jordan here, bringing you a new gun review segment. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the PKP Pechneg Light Machine Gun. Now if you've watched my BF3 rants on my channel, you know that a majority of the time I play support class. I venture into assault now and then, but for the most part I enjoy taking a fully loaded LMG with extended mags and letting loose like a fire hose of death, putting out flames in the enemy's heart and making their vision so blurry they should be declared legally blind. I've been using this gun for a while now and it's grown on me to be sure, but it takes some getting used to. Starting off with some good news, this gun deals damage very, very well. It ranks in the three-way tie for first as far as damage goes, dealing out 34 damage when you're all up in their face, and it drops off to 22 damage at a distance. That means it's going to give you kills from anywhere from 3 to 5 shots. The high damage is great because it means you have the potential to take down an enemy with only 2 shots if you squeeze in one headshot and one body shot. It's not something you're going to do every time, but if you take the recoil into effect and start with a body shot, your gun will jump upwards from there, and if you get it right, take down that bitch when your second bullet blows out the back of its cranium, giving you an extra 10 points in the process too. Unfortunately, while we're on the subject of recoil, this is one area where this weapon pales in comparison to the other LMGs available. It has the second highest vertical recoil of all the LMGs, and its horizontal recoil isn't anything to be happy about either. It's also second place in the loser race, only being outsucked in both categories by the M240B. Its first shot recoil in the multiplier is a lesser percentage than most guns, but when you consider the fact that its base recoil is so high, this doesn't really redeem it that much. It's like getting a Diet Coke with your supersized Big Mac. I mean, yeah, it's less calories, but when you're horking down that much grease and quote-unquote beef, you're not suddenly going to be healthy. Its initial jump is still one of the highest in the game. Also on the downside with this gun is its rate of fire. Only 600 RPM, making it one of the slowest firing LMGs in the game. Most of the other LMGs in Battlefield 3 are in the 650 to 700 RPM range, and with some even higher than that. So in this category, the PKP scores a big fat below average. It also has quite a large spread, especially when being hip fired, and it's got a below average muzzle velocity of only 560 meters per second. Kind of lackluster when compared to the other LMGs ranking over 700, and the M249 clocking at a whopping 800 meters per second. But wait! Before you cast aside the PKP like that weird kid at school that smells like cat pee, let it be known that the PKP has a lower damage drop-off rate, reaching its minimum damage at 60 meters instead of the usual 50 meters for most of the other guns. Combine that with its high damage, that makes the PKP excel in the time to kill category, ranking among the quickest killing weapons in the light machine gun category. Looks like that smelly kid had a hidden talent and it turns out it's slaying commies like a boss. He's got my vote in the talent show. So far, the PKP seems to rank in the extremes in most of its categories, being extremely good at damage but pretty bad at recoil and spread. The only thing it does with shining mediocrity is its reload time. Oh, wow. It's pretty middle of the pack. Not super quick, but definitely not the slowest banana of the bunch either. All this combines to make the PKP a pretty high risk, high reward option. If you can handle the recoil and spread it throws at you, this gun can serve you well in the battlefield battlefield. Now as far as scopes go, I find the PKA 3.4x scope works pretty well. It's got enough magnification to help you out in those mid to long range engagements, but at the same time it doesn't hinder you too much in the up close and personal stuff. This is really a personal preference depending on your playstyle. I tend to try to bipod a little bit back from the action and take out enemies at mid range. If you're up close and personal, use the red dot or holographic scopes and you'll be just fine. Now as far as attachments go, with the extreme recoil that the PKP exhibits, you're going to want to do all you can to reduce this. I personally use the bipod whenever I'm using the PKP, or any LMG for that matter, as it is the holy grail of recoil reduction attachments. True, you have to go prone or find a proper ledge to put it on first, but if you alter the way you play to always put yourself in a position to be able to bipod, you'll be as unstoppable as that really fast guy who keeps breaking world records at the Olympics. You know the guy, he's from Jamaica. What's his name? Bob Marley. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, the bipod reduces both recoil and spread dramatically, turning the tables in your favor in those mid to long range engagements. A bipod makes this weapon extraordinary because of the high damage, and you'll be killing more enemies than you can shake a stick at. I don't even know what that means. Now if you're more of a running and gunning type of support, you could always put a tandem combo of a flash suppressor and a foregrip on the PKP once you've unlocked both. This brings the recoil down to a much more manageable level for all the Rambos out there, although the effect isn't nearly as dramatic as with the bipod. Now if you want, you can always combine the bipod with the flash suppressor to make the PKP even more accurate when the bipod is deployed. But I tend to lean more towards using extended mags with the bipod instead because I like to suppress for as long as possible. One last thing I want to touch on with this weapon is the suppression factor. If you play the support fest properly, you're going to be doing a lot of suppressing. I've covered suppression in one of my Battlefield 3 rants on my channel. And the PKP is an excellent suppression weapon. Because of its larger 54mm rounds, it actually affects the enemy more than most LMGs, blurring their screen and making them more inaccurate than they would have been with, say, the M429. With squad suppression on, this multiplies even further, and you can really alter the flow of battle heavily with this much suppression. Keep the enemies in their hidey holes with your gun, and let your fellow teammates advance the line and kill them with their guns. You get points, they get points, everyone's a winner. Except for those guys you just helped kill. They're not winners, they're dead. 
So in short, the PKP is a high damage, high recoil suppression machine. And if you can get used to the high spread and recoil, or use attachments to your advantage to reduce said recoil, the PKP can be a force to be reckoned with in skilled hands. Well that about wraps it up for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. And thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more commentaries, machinimas, rants, and movies.